Hi there, I'm Eli Sipka, and this is the Petros Action 52 Masochist. And this is the last game I'm giving a D- in this multi-cart. This is the only the second game on the multi-cart listed, and the very first space shooter on the multi-cart, and this is Star Evil. <laughs> Go work on my sinister bag on that. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a space shooter, as you can see. The enemies are starfighters. The boss is a birthday cake, believe it or not. Why is the boss a birthday cake? Especially like a birthday cake class cruiser. Interesting. Now, I believe there are like four levels in this. I don't, I'm not quite sure exactly how many levels. I think there's four. And I can only get up to level two. And because of a certain glitch, which I'll explain, which will become apparent as I play on, in my high school, and because I actually did my run through of this with a Game Genie cheat code enabling me uh, Infinite Continues, and uh, also uh, also basically uh, you know, protecting me against uh, impacts of the enemy fighters, but not against the space blocks or the terrain, and I got a total of 155,500 points. And I'll, I'll explain the reason for that later on, but also pretty much through attrition. Good old fashioned attrition. Now, the very first space you list on the NES Multicode of Action 52 is indeed a terrifyingly evil game. There's a birthday cake. Purely due to the way it was laid out by the devs' incompetence of game coding. This may have been the very first space shooter they ever designed and they got better progressively on, or it was a simply a quickie project they slapped together using spare bits of random code and done in an extremely quick fashion to fit their coil on time. Either scenario could be true, and there's the glitch. I'll explain what the glitch is, but just I'm gonna have to find a way to just reset this. See the moment. Come on. Just have to basically wear myself out. That sucks. Yeah, space vacuum cleaners. Oh, by the way, I'll also explain that there's like one way to, uh, if you come across this glitch, there's, there's an alternative way to play this game. Just give me a second to, let me get a few points before I, okay. Alright. Now, Star Evil has a player control space fire dodging space blocks, those squares, they are placed in what I consider to be the most sadistic level design ever to feature in an 8-bit game console, console game. Right from the get-go, the player is immediately destroyed by a space block placed right in front of them as the game starts. This happens on every level of this wretched game, and also necessitates the player having to immediately move sideways once they start their gameplay. So every time a game uh, level starts, move sideways immediately. This isn't even the half of it as other problems become apparent as you go on. As the player runs the gauntlet, some of the space blocks actually are bigger than they seem. This will become apparent on level 2. As the devs have stuffed up and made the on-screen blocks smaller than the hitboxes. Now, for the, for the non-gamers out there, a hitbox is essentially the area around a, a character that is needed for um, things like collision detection, also for hit register. That beat level 2. Uh, beat level 1. Yeah. You'll see that uh, hitbox problem momentarily. Wait a second. Let me see where it is. Around here. See, look. See? I hit black. But that was actually the, the hitbox of the character. They, they made the sprite, the visible sprite, small, look smaller than the actual hitbox. And you need a hitbox in order to, so you, when you shoot an enemy, they hits register. Also for collision detection purposes. So in some areas, your fingers need to do some fancy gymnastics really fast to avoid getting killed by something you literally cannot see. The games in Action 52 also use a very tight sprite limit, which, uh, yeah, having a more severe limitation than regular professional NES games. Regular NES games actually have a higher sprite limit. So the reason why this one has a lower one, that's, well, that's, your guess goes mine. The limit here 
manifests itself in a very obvious manner. If the player keeps holding on the fire button and shooting out those Q-tips of fire, the limit, the, the, the enemy ships simply don't appear, as Morticard's strict sprite limit refuses to summon them, which means that if you get to the end of the level, the boss won't appear. Hmm. This might sound like a good thing for the mean mortals out there who don't want to face off against their first encounter with the dreaded Action 52 boss AI, which is a special code designed to allow bosses to be extremely challenging by having their movement extremely unpredictable. Any enemy sprite tethered to this particular code will move around in random directions, ignoring any terrain whatsoever, and are very, very difficult to put down at minimum health cost to the player because the bosses actually 52 all given massive amounts of hit points. But this is a very bad thing, as the boss in this game is tied to the game's level exit code. If the boss doesn't appear due to not being summoned, due to the sprite limit being reached, the, limit, the level simply won't end. This means that you're stuck in that level for good, and the only avenue left for the player in that gameplay is to devise an alternate gameplay mode, where the player just simply just shoots down every enemy ship that shows up, the, mo the boss might not be coming, the mook fighters surely will, until either the player's ship either loses all the health, just, just wears out to the end, or the player reaches the score that they plan to reach. In my playthrough, I spent 10 whole minutes stuck at the end of level 2, because I accidentally caused the, um, the enemy, the boss didn't, uh, didn't die correctly. And uh, I just spent 10 minutes simply gunning down waves of enemy mook fighters until I reached about 155,500 points and decided that, that was it and destroyed my ship by reversing to a space block. This unholy space ship does, does exist in three versions. Besides the NES original, there was a remake on the Sega Genesis port of Action 52, which has a much better version on their multi cart by default. And the 2010 indie project, project Action 52 owns might have been aborted, but a working version of their remake of Star Evil was completed and is actually downloadable off the Internet Archive as of the time of this review. Those two remakes are far superior, that's for damn sure. So we have here the actually the very first D minus game on the multi and the very last D minus game I'm reviewing for Action 52 NES. And like I said, I gave it the D minus, 1 out of 10. It is freaking atrocious. So, just to recap the alternate way, when you reach the end and are denied you try the cake, the only option is to turn this from a space shooter into a survival shooter. So what you do is just you, just, if, if you come across, if, you, if that happens to you, just set a, set a, uh, a target to, provided that you have the Game Genie uh, Infinite Continuous Cheat Code on, just set yourself a, a target, a limit of a score, and just try and get that score. That's it. And once you reach that score, just drive yourself into a block, that's it. Okay, so that's it for the Apatra Section 52 of Masochist for this particular review video. From from here on in, just they're just going to get better and better. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments, or associated trivia, hit me up in the comment section, I'll be happy to answer. Hope you guys are staying safe, take it easy, and see ya. This is the Apatra Section 52 Masochist signing off. And as you can see, I'm just having problems getting past the invisible hitbox. It is a pain in the ass. They don't call the Star Evil for nothing. Hmm.